Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Termel, and Lesson 36 is the end of the report on the Argentine Red Global de Trueque system done by Heloisa Primaveri at the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre in 2001. This is about the responsibilities that go with it and interesting stuff. Ending with another Bloomberg article distorting what's going on. Principles of the Red Global de Treque. As far as fertile interpretation is concerned, says Heloisa Primaveri, it seems fair to us to pay homage to the memory of Michel Tavernier, and I met him at the attack conference in France when I gave my European tour. Just Google for Termel and Tavernier. I did a report on him. A naval engineer! <laughs> Another engineer who thinks interest-free stable money is best. Inventor and French philosopher, founder of the AES Association Internationale pour le soutien de l'écosophie, creator of objects and concepts, audacious in his approach, who first told us the Red Global de Trueque has minted its own money. You have created a social money. Tavernier, for whom the official currency is not legal, reminds us that already at the time of Louis XIV, his advisor, Pézin Bois-Gilbert, often considered as the father of macroeconomics, declared that money bound to interest was a criminal money. Today, the demand for interest-free money is present in a number of groups and social movements, often inspired by the work of Silvio Gazelle, who incidentally lived and made a fortune in Argentina. Now, don't forget, a lot earlier than him, you got Isaiah, Ezekiel, Nehemiah, Habakkuk, Nia, Jesus, Muhammad, who all said to run money with no interest. It overshadows the proposal of the Tobin tax on speculative transactions put forward by attack. And at the United Nations, the Tobin tax was presented in the same issue as the Unilex resolution. And the Tobin tax is a tax on rich people to help the poor people. I call that splashing in the pool, which does nothing to solve the imbalance in the banking pump house. The difference between these two requirements, obviously, is a major problem of power and interaction of forces, which further increases the obligation for social operators to come to a decision about the strategy of social money as a possibility for reconstructing the market from the bottom to the top, whilst preserving the pleasure of the discussions on a new forms of world governing at Davos and Porto Alegre. Therefore, we go along with Michel Tavernier, among so many others, in maintaining that social money is part of a movement to recover the model of abundance and break from the model of scarcity. And the book that convinced my granddad that social credits were the answer was called Sous le signe de l'abondance, which meant born under the sign of abundance and kept poor by usury. It isn't. Uh, as it may appear at first sight, a question of returning to primitive barter but on the contrary, of a victory of new technologies of production and information associated with a reinterpretation of the social phenomenon of money. To do this, we need at the same time a strong and organized civil society, a dynamic state, and a market made up of entrepreneurs who have renounced financial speculation to face the challenge of innovation responsibilities, how to make the improbable possible. As we stated from the beginning of these thoughts, if we wish to understand the emergence of improbable events, the first bank that lent money to the poor, of which continues to recover 100% of the money lent, and they're talking about the UNUS Grameen Bank, um, the first town that dared to open its budget to direct citizen participation, the first group that dedicated itself to organize itself in order to improve the quality of life without using the market, and that's the first barter systems and lets, our task will be barren and tiring, especially if it is only a question of reconstructing their stories. However, if the explanations are used for something, and searching for explanations certainly seems to characterize our Western culture, we will opt for this one. One fine day, someone imagined something that didn't exist previously and was very unlikely, but this someone started to do what he'd imagined. If the way is strewn with pitfalls, it is precisely because the dominant patterns don't allow us a glimpse of other possibilities. But once a critical mass is achieved and a certain degree of visibility ensured, in the media, for example, the poss impossible suddenly becomes possible. And then there are few who will refuse to share the ceremony in the media spotlight. 
So the hour has come to recover the epic dimension of life, faced with the extent of contemporary tra tragedy, where everything is known in real time, where we coast along on celebratory weddings and risk the loss of an entire continent caught between AIDS and ethnic conflict, the lack of imagination that characterizes political life seems cannibal in comparison and incapable of building something as simple as the common good. But in view of our lack of responsibility, when faced simply with helping our neighbor, there's nothing left to do but make this ultimate invitation. It is imperative that we believe that the world is not only one and alone, that it is possible to live differently, and that we are finally all responsible for everything and everyone. That we are inspired by the experiments of the Grameen Bank. Yeah, yeah, lending small amounts at 20%. Got and it got him a Nobel Prize. So when I say I'm going to get a Nobel Prize for lending large amounts at zero percent, you can understand why. You know, Yunus and his Grameen Bank by Porto Alegre or by Bernal or even others is therefore a matter of developing new strategies, combining citizen participation, microcredit, and social money. Acro microcredit is piggy banking. Social money is creationary casino banking. Uh, which enable us to use our imagination and courage to become involved in a present and future worthy of our heritage and our non-exploited possibilities. If it was possible to set off from an initial barter club towards an economy of solidarity in Argentina, introduce this solution in Argentinian and Bolivian prisons where microcredit was already established, merge the Palmas Bank in Fortaleza, Brazil with solidarity barter networks, what else are we capable of? Where are we heading? Which are the experiments we can learn from, and which do we still not know? Well, worldwide unilets trading based on time, something everybody's got. If we believe ourselves responsible for everything, and not just a small part that falls to us, it is most likely that we will have the necessary imagination to create new strategies and the courage which we need to build new bridge, uh, bridges between the ancient and new model of abundance. Only the ancient model of scarcity and the new model of abundance, because you're always short of money because you owe 11 for every 10. Only thus will we be able to believe that wealth isn't only there for the few, and shortages for nearly everyone else. Such is our invitation in this workshop. Eloisa Primaveri, one of the founders of the Red Global Troque of Argentina. Ending on a Bloomberg article from, uh, it's titled, Argentina Prints Money as People Refuse to Pay Taxes, February 26th. Argent, uh, Daniel Helft. Argentines, angry at the government for confiscating their savings, have found a new way to protest, refusing to pay taxes. Rather than trying to track down evaders, the government plans to print as much as a billion pesos this month to make up for the shortfall and cover February bills. And as long as I can pay my taxes with them, I'd take them. The increase in peso notes may weaken the currency, if you believe in shift A inflation, which has already lost half its value this year and accelerate inflation, analysts said. So this is stressing the big lie that inflation is shift A, too much money chasing the goods, when we know by now it's shift B, same money chasing less goods after foreclosure. We know those, government, I, those governments are spending IOUs into circulation and receiving work back, right, for them which backs them up and makes everything fine. The government's answer to step up the printing of money risks a return to inflation, the analysts say. And I point out only the government's interest-bearing notes lose their value. The farmers' IOUs for tons of grain retained their ton of grain value. So, the government, which printed 350 million pesos early this month, may have to print another 650 million pesos by the end of the week to help pay its bill. Yes, as long as people can pay their taxes with them and the government issues them in exchange for stuff. And how do those dollars get into circulation so that they can cause shift A inflation? More money chasing the goods. Only by buying stuff or human time. So all money spent into circulation by government gets backed up by the stuff it receives when spent. Notice how economists and their press can disassociate the money spent with the stuff received and just see money going in somehow to end up raising prices when more stuff is being created too. 
So, uh, da -da -da -da. getting deeper, the increase in money supply is likely to make it more difficult for Argentina to secure new loans from the International Monetary Fund. Financing the government considers key to help revive the economy, analysts said. Well, who cares if the IMF won't lend you the money if you're printing enough of your own? Getting deeper in debt is the key to reviving the economy, all these analysts know. This is the borrow your way out of debt crowd at their inane best. 